All right, so uh, I'm just putting this at the beginning because I just realized something. Um, when I recorded this video, I didn't do it live because there was some kind of popping noise, which I mentioned in the next part of the video. But then after I listened to the main part, the benchmarking part of the video here, uh, I noticed on my when I'm wearing my headphones that there's a little bit of a humming noise. So what that is, is the laptop mic picking up the sound from the laptop itself vibrating on the table. Like, in other words, I have this plastic table um, that, you know, these folding tables that I use for my computer and stuff. The problem that I have with it with microphones is that it, if you do anything, if you just bump it into the table or whatever the case is, if you have a standing microphone, like, not this kind, but one that sits on the desktop, or if you have a laptop, um, it picks up any noise through the plastic table. Um, so what was happening was is that the microphone was picking up the noise that was bouncing off the table, <laughs> basically, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, I didn't really research it deeply, but... Uh, so I'm going to try to remove that when I re-render the video, but I don't want to mess with the sound too much because I, you know, that's all part of the uh, the process that I did. So I'm just going to try to reduce that humming a little bit, um, although it's not that bad to me. But I noticed it was more prominent when I'm hearing, wearing headphones, so that might annoy some people. So, um, so that's all I got to say about that. Hi everybody, Game Cooker US Rocks VR here. Um, I'm back again uh, doing my part two video. Um, just uh, gonna finish showing my benchmarks of the um, Omen gaming laptop that I have. Um, HP Omen uh, Series 15 laptop. Um, so it uh, has a six core processor in it as you already know um, Core i7 8750H base clock at 2.2 gigahertz um, boost clock I think of 4.1 um, 256 gigabyte solid state drive plus a one terabyte hard drive it's got 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM, which is nice. Windows 10, 15.6 inch diagonal full HD IPS LED display. Um, only 60 hertz though, but it's got a pretty dense pixel. Um, pretty good pixel density. I mean, I really have to stick my face up here to see the pixels, so that's pretty nice. Um, and it's got GeForce uh, GTX 1060 6 gig um, discrete graphics card in the laptop, so that was also a plus. And it's got Bang and Olufsen uh, sound system in it, so it's pretty good. So six core, 12 thread processor, which is nice. <clears throat> so you can use this to game, and you can also use it for creativity purposes as well. Um, you know, it's a good all-around laptop. Um, I didn't test the battery life in it, though, um, but it seems to be pretty good if you're not gaming, <laughs> obviously. Um, you know, I don't think I've ever had a laptop uh, that lasted more than, like, say, two hours, two and a half hours when you're gaming. Um, I'm not talking about, like, you know... Um, you know, playing like a puzzle game or something like that, like, you know, a card game or something, but, uh, you know, if you're going to play like Resident Evil or Metro Exodus or, you know, Division or any of those games like that, you know, you're going to burn up the battery pretty quick. So, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to bother testing the battery because I don't know why people uh, expect gaming laptops to last a long time. Um, I mean, I didn't test it, though. It could last four hours. I don't know. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that one day. I'll leave a game running and see how long it takes to go dead. 
Um, so if you guys want to know that, then I have, I'll do that. But, uh, you know, I don't really have the time to do that. So anyway, so I'm not going to waste much time talking here because I know I do tend to do that a lot. But, you know, for me, time goes by much faster or much slower than it does <laughs> in the video itself, you know. What seems like just minutes to me is a half hour, you know, uh, when it's all said and done. So I'm going to finish showing you the benchmark results that I got. Or so I just took screenshots over a very long length of time. Now, you know, I didn't I don't know if I mentioned that in the last video. You know, I didn't take just screenshots over 5 minutes. I mean, I, I was playing those games for like a half hour to an hour, you know, trying to take it through, you know, trying to go through different areas and different zones, different rooms, whatever. Um to get a feel of like what the frames per second were in each situation. So you know, I know that's kind of long and boring maybe for some people, but, you know, I'm giving you evidence. I'm not just giving you an average. You know, I mean, I don't mind an average. It doesn't bother me at all, you know, but some people want to know, well, how is it going to react when I'm in this situation or that situation? So, you know, I, I was trying to use some modern games, and then I was trying to use some you know other games which I'm getting to you know I was just kind of doing the harder games first and I you know just so you can see how they were I think the next one I gotta do now is Resident Evil um, the other thing too that I wanted to mention really quick is my live video it seemed like the sound for some reason was popping now before I did the live stream I did test my sound I didn't actually record myself talking and you know stuff like that before I did the live stream and my voice sounded well you know it didn't sound perfect because I'm recording through a little microphone on a laptop but there was no popping noise or anything like that it was just clear you know so I think the live stream compromised the sound of my voice going through so you were hearing like the popping noise every time I guess the volume of my voice you know raised up so that's not the laptop doing that at least as far as I can tell because as you'll see from this video my voice will be fine you know it may not be like the depth quality that you want you know because I'm again I'm using the laptop to show you how it all sounds so that you know if you want this laptop and you want to know how it's gonna sound when you're recording or whatever talking to your friends um, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm doing all these tests from this laptop alone. Um, and then after after I do the benchmarks, I'm going to show you the sound test, which is about 15 minutes. But that's because I'm showing you two different songs and showing you the decibels and all that stuff. Um, and then after that, I'm going to talk about laptops. Okay? And how you can kind of shop for some other laptops based on this one if you like the specs of this one and you like the performance of this one okay now the ones that I'm going to be looking at are going to be better than this one but within the same general price range okay so uh, you know from a thousand to fifteen hundred per se so um, alright so let's get started so I'm going to continue showing you the benchmarks here I think, uh, yeah, well, I have the Division 2 and Resident Evil. Let me do the Division 2 real quick first because just get that one out of the way. All right, so this shouldn't be too long. So here you go. So, again, I put everything on a reasonable, what I thought was a reasonable graphical setting that I would like because I like nice graphics, okay? I cannot play any games with low graphics settings. So to be fair, you can adjust things down if you'd like. But to be fair, this is probably the best case scenario that I put this at. So that you could have playable frame rates and still have good graphical quality. Okay, this is just my settings because I like nice graphics. Alright, so again it's on high. And then I, I think, uh, let's see here. Hey, I don't know why I did that again. It looks like I took two screenshots again. 
Unless I just, let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So, yeah, I, I just went down because you have to scroll down. So you can see shadow quality is high. Resolution scales at 100%. Sharpening is at 10, so that's the sharpest. Spot shadow resolution high, you know, whatever that means. Um, you know, particle detail high, volumetric fog high, reflection high, whatever. Vegetation quality high. Um... I turned off the uh, the vignette. Water quality is high. Chromatic aberrations on. Projected texture resolutions 512. I think that's the highest. Uh, sky textures, yes. Terrain quality high. And then uh, you can see I tested it at 1080p, 60 hertz monitor. But I think I turned off. Uh, I don't think the. Uh, V-Sync is on. And then I turned off this enabled reduced latency off. And it's DirectX. Okay, so I did test, I think, all the games on DirectX 12 if it allowed me to. Alright, so you can see here, um, I think it's showing these backwards, so I apologize. Oh, anyway, well, he, oh no, this is the test result. I'm sorry. It's been a, like almost a week since I did the other videos, so, or whatever several days um, I've been busy and sidetracked so alright so this is the test result on those settings um, you can see here that the average was 60 frames per second uh, the GPU usage was 98 percent CPU was 53 percent um, and even on the uh, FPS counter here it said an average of 57 so you know it's, you know, they're both kind of close to each other, so you can probably trust this number here, 57, 60. Um, so that's a high quality, and there really wasn't any lag or anything that I noticed. Um, you can see here that uh, it's using 5.1 gigabytes of VRAM. So it's using a decent amount of that 6 gigs, but it's not, not even close to 6. And then the RAM is at 9.2, so it's using a lot of RAM. So that 16 gigs really comes in handy. So uh, during the benchmark itself, you can see here, I don't know, let's see. So during this scene here, 59. During this scene here, oh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong, I think. Jeez, forgive me. 58 frames per second there during that scene in the beginning of the benchmark. 53, 53 frames per second here. You can see the CPU is working. But again, it's, it's switching off between, you know, all the cores, so that's uh, not really going to be an issue. It's managing managing the uh, temperatures and the wattage voltage pretty good. This scene here again is the this is the next bent, uh, ran it again, and you can see here, pretty much came out to the same 59 frames per second at the same quality settings. You know, pretty similar results. This one said 57 again, so you know. Some of the temperatures are up high here, but again, this is only happening at very short intervals. You know, these are constantly changing. So I, I really wouldn't get worried about these temperatures too much. Um, you know, you don't want to be playing in a very hot environment either. I mean, if you're going to play out in 100 degree weather, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't really be doing that if I were you. Um, you know turn down the graphics settings or something you know to keep it from working so hard so that was pretty much that so I was getting pretty much 60 frames per second at high so you know you can't really complain here it's showing 5.3 gigabytes of VRAM being used the boost clock is at 1721 the GPU is at 84 degrees you know and again, the, this, the, this temperature here will change frequently because 
um, you know, the fans will kick in as it gets warmer. You know what I'm saying? So once it gets down to a certain temperature, they'll they'll kind of tone down a little, and then the temperature will go back up, and then they'll kick back on. So I mean, it's it's kind of you know, again, management. You know, it's it's doing what it can, you know, to give you the best experience possible. You know, so it's it's not it's not a bad situation. I mean, again, 84 degrees. It's warm, but, you know, if it was up to, like, 90, then I would worry. You know, I don't think I've ever seen it get that high, though. So, you know, these are pretty brand new games, too. So, I mean, it's, uh, give it credit, you know, it's running them pretty freaking good, you know, as far as I'm concerned. So, um, and I think the Division 2 and Metro are kind of, like, games that are kind of outliers when it comes to performance and, you know, really pushing your hardware. Um, I, I don't believe that the next all games are going to be that way, especially the competitive ones. They're probably not going to really push your graphics too much. I mean, that's more of an online latency issue that you're going to have maybe... Uh, to worry about there. I mean, if I was in, if I was going to worry about anything with competitive games, because they're not really that intense graphically, I don't think. So anyway, let's get on to the next game. So Division Two, it can run 60 frames per second on high. You know, if you want to tweak out, if you want to, you know, kind of get these numbers to go down a little bit more, you can kind of make some more adjustments and still have pretty decent looking game. All right, so let's go to the next one here which I'm sure everybody wants. So Resident Evil I played for a while. Now I have to tell you that it was, it's the first Resident Evil game that I ever played. <clears throat> now that doesn't include benchmarking, but um, this one I played for the first time. And you know, I have to admit that, well, I like adventure games, so. It didn't really bore me. I mean, maybe some people don't just like running around there collecting stuff. <laughs> Which, you know, it's kind of like... Can be that kind of experience. I think I was playing Claire. So, you know, that might have been different than the, uh, the normal, you know, um, run through. So, anyway, let me show you Resident Evil. Because that one was pretty unique in the way it was uh, running. So, I think uh, it's, it's worth us to look over this one. Because this obviously is a very new and, you know, it's a ported game. I don't know if that makes a big difference when it comes to performance. Um, but, uh, the overall, the average that I got, and, and this average comes from all these screenshots. I took the average that it was showing on the FPS counter, okay, of all the screenshots that I took. And I didn't like, you know, yes, they are they are random, but at the same time, I didn't like try to like um, purposely uh, pick out like the only scenes that had like high frames per second. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. I didn't bias it at all, trust me. It's just, in fact, I probably put more low frames per second ones in there than maybe most people would, but I don't know. But I think this is a fair average, 51.4 frames per second overall. Um, again, you could get higher if you make some more tweaks. Um, so let's just go ahead and... and, and uh, check out the settings I used um, so again I don't know why I took some of these screenshots because it's kind of weird oh, well anyway what happened here oh well whatever so okay so here's what I did um, this game's a little weird when you're trying to set up the graphics I don't know why I did not take any more pictures here though but anyway what I did personally was go by this number right here. Okay? 
So it says here I have 5.91 gigabytes to available, okay, that I could use. So what I did, <clears throat> excuse me, was try to get this number as high as I could and keep decent graphics, uh, deep, keep a de decent looking game, okay? So, <clears throat> as you can see these little bars here, graphic effects quality, uh, this really doesn't have any numbers here, so I don't even know why they even have it. <laughs> but you can see, you can make some adjustments here, I don't really understand why they have this thing, because I just think it's goofy. Um, but, you know, the image quality is up pretty high. Model quality is up very high. Lighting quality is up to max almost. Graphical effects quality, I'm not really sure what that is. I'm sorry. Processing load, I guess that has to do with the CPU, I'm assuming. So I used uh, anti-aliasing FXAA, TAA, and this is running at 1080p, as you can see here. 1920 by 1080 DirectX 12 64-bit so um, I don't I put the image quality at 130 percent because I put the rendering mode at normal okay <clears throat> and then I turned up the image quality so it seemed like I could do better that way than start out with like super high settings because that would take up too much VRAM so I guess what it, what I did was put it on normal and then upscale the image quality because this game is rough, I found out. So anyway, let's. I'm going to move on here. So this is 1080p, normal rendering mode, boosting the image quality. And then good anti-aliasing here. FXAA, TAA is pretty good, good enough. All right, so here's a scene in the beginning where the guy's, uh, you know, whatever, in his car. Um... You know, you got 86, uh, excuse me, you got 78 frames per second here. And, you know, you can see that the, uh, oops, shoot. You can see that the, uh, you know, picture quality is pretty good. You know, for 1080p. Um, I got mail coming, too, that I got to sign for. <clears throat> So here you can see again it's still running at 73 frames per second. Now out here when he got out of his car and it went it kind of went it, it's a, the whole thing is a cutscene, right? But when he got out of the car for some reason man it took a frames per second dump. You know? And this is something that happened throughout the game in certain situations, like where it went into a cutscene. Like during the game itself, it was fine most of the time. You know what I'm saying? But when, when it went into certain like cutscenes or, or cinematic or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, the frames went down. Now that was the worst. I don't think I saw it drop to 26 ever again, but we'll check my screenshots. I don't, I don't remember now. Um, but you can see the GPU is working at 99%. Um, I gotta, I guess I gotta take this out of full screen. You know, you can see that here in this cutscene, it's working at 99%. The processor's not really working very much, so. Not sure what's going on here. So maybe the GPU was just, you know, overworked here. It's only using 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM. So there's obviously some kind of computation going on here that the video card has a hard time with, and it could be async compute. If I'm if I'm saying the right thing. Um, now AMD had adopted asynchronous computation a long time ago. NVIDIA kind of took a long time to get on board with it because I guess they figured it wasn't important, you know, uh, because developers weren't really using it that much. But now, like, games like Metro and I think Resident Evil, they're using that in their games now. Uh, and that's what I think I forgot in the previous video when we were doing the Metro. I was telling you that it was dropping frame rates like when you were in the train with people, you know, or in that one scene where there was a bunch of people and they were like, kind of greeting you coming in the door I think they were using like I think somebody said asynchronous com computations there 
and these the GTX 1060 just is not made to handle that too well um, it could be DirectX 12 but I don't know about that either you know but again it wasn't really that often so let me uh, detach this here I think I yeah there we go let me use the arrows let me see if I can zoom in here and still fast forward now so here was a scene where she was it was in a cut scene again and um, let me see if I can just do this maybe this would be better nope it's not gonna work for me. there we go but see I can't there we go all right so that was 46 frames per second here it was 70 frames per second now this was me taking uh, zooming around and trying to get a front shot of her because <laughs> they don't really like you rotating in this game so you can see here again uh, the GPU is working good it's using 4.7 gigs of VRAM 7.4 gigs of uh, computer RAM but it's running good 70 frames per second uh, I think here is another cutscene I think so it's down to 43 frames per second. Um, this is me walking in like a dark scene. Some of the darker scenes were kind of the frame rates dropped. Here, 45 frames per second. Almost 5 gigs of VRAM. Um, you know, the, te the GPU temperature is going down though. <coughs> So again, I'm not sure exactly what's going on in these scenes. So here, 51 frames per second. You know, the CPU is fine. It's running at a steady 3800 megahertz, you know, pretty good. <clears throat> Here's 50 frames per second in this dark uh, office here with these uh, nice pictures on the wall <laughs> <clears throat> again GPUs working now I mean it's 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 it, this game really works the GPU it's from running at 99% still still keeping a steady temperature though so here is uh, I think a cut scene again 45 frames per second 5.2 gigahertz uh, gigabits of uh, VRAM it's uh, boosting at 1747 you know the uh, processors also boosting almost to 3900 megahertz so that's working so you know everything's doing its job you know but you can see the GPU here with these fans running now I do believe that during this game the fans were running constantly so it was, it was trying to keep that temperature down to like near 80 degrees so that's good you know the, the fans on this laptop are are you can hear them right but they're not like airplane loudness you know like some older graphics cards used to be when they ramped up they are running but they're not running so loud that at least for me they weren't really like breaking the immersion immersion of my gaming experience here and you know of course you know this game there isn't a lot of noise anyway you know until you like encounter something so normally if the the fans were just like ramped up really loud you know and annoying you know you'd be like oh man this is ridiculous you just want to throw on some headphones so, <clears throat> I'm waiting for my phone here to update. But I will record the, uh, I'll try to record the fan, like I'll try to play a game and then record the fan noise, f like from here, you know, from where my head is, you know, and let you hear how loud it is. And then I'll put the phone close to it and then you can hear that, you know. But it's not that bad, really. I mean, the fans do ramp up, but they're they're built well, so they're they're not super loud, you know. Um, 
So let's continue here. So here's another cutscene. You know, again, down to 46 frames per second. Uh, the video card, again, is still running at almost 100%. <clears throat> Temperatures on the CPU are good. Still running at a steady 3800 megahertz. You know, it's really, like, consistent. And, you know, this the fans were working very well here, too, keeping this around 80 degrees. So... You know, you I, I was really surprised at how much work the computer was doing with this game because I'm thinking, well, it's an old game that's kind of like redone, so how could it be so bad? But they did a good job graphically with it, and, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I'm not a programmer, so I don't know how things go. So again here, this is her outside in the rain. I think it's another cutscene, so you know, drop down to about 43 here. So here it's uh, 65 frames per second during this rainy scene. 56 frames per second there. 55 frames per second <laughs> when she was looking at the zombies with the, the flame with the flaming cars <clears throat> I mean you, this is the type of scene that you would think it would drop down to low frame rates but it ran it well you know 55 frames per second um, you know the graphics quality is good too you know I mean it may not look good to you here because it got it minimized but I mean it's it when you when you're playing the game it looks pretty good. So 51 frames per second, you know, 58 frames per second here, 56 frames per second, 45 frames per second, 45 there, 61 here, dark hallway, 50 frames per second, and this is, I think, a cutscene, 51 frames per second. So it seems like in the later areas, uh, you know, it was it was doing well. You know? Forty one frames per second there. <clears throat> Again, when when you have like I don't know if it's the shadowing maybe that's causing it, you know, the uh, the real time shadows that causes it to drop when things get a little darker. So here it was like 41, 36. You know, I know, whoops. I know people are gonna be looking at this number here, right? 20.26.2 milliseconds. And they're probably gonna say, well, that's pretty, you know, high latency there. Um, I didn't really notice a lot of jitteriness or anything like that when I was playing the game. Now here it's using almost 5.6 gigs of VRAM, 9.1 of regular RAM, and it's 36 frames per second here, again in another dark scene. So something's going on with the dark scenes, the way they have this game coded, um, that's causing it to really struggle I guess you could say. So here, you know, but, you know, just not too far away, it goes back up to 50, 50 frames per second. And it's using a lot of VRAM here for some reason, so go figure, you know. So I, maybe it's rendering, like, a lot of stuff in, like, r real time, maybe because... I don't know, maybe it's like all this stuff it's got to re render individually or something, you know? Um, would seem kind of weird, though, that that's the case, because I don't think you can, like, move all these items. But if all these items are individually placed, 
as individual objects, then I guess that would kind of cause things to lag because it's got to render so much. But it's not laggy though, that's what I'm trying to say. It might drop in frame rates, but it still seems to run smooth. So, however they have it programmed, you might have drops in frame rates, but it still ran very, very smooth. You know, I didn't have any problems where it was like, you know, laggy and jittery. That's just me, you know. Maybe, maybe I'm just not noticing it. So here, here again, you have some drops, 36 frames per second. Um, again, in these like dark areas where there's like, you know, this kind of lighting going on here and shadowing. I'm not sure. All maybe it's just rendering all these little effects here uh, separately or something, you know. Um, I'm not totally sure. But again, the game looks fantastic. It looks really nice. 56 frames per second here. The VRAM usage ramped up. Temperature's going up a little bit here. Probably because of the fan speed slowing down. So here I'm in the, in the locker room. Uh, the police locker room here. And uh, you can see here... Uh, I'm running at 58 frames per second. The temperature dropped on the GPU here. But I'm still using 5.2 gigabytes of VRAMs. <laughs> so go figure, man. You know? So, the, you know, it depends on what you're rendering. You know, that's going to make things work differently. So... Again here, dark area, frames per second dropped. I couldn't really get any, any. I, I don't know if I took any screenshots of me actually shooting people. I was trying to do it, but obviously with this kind of uh, fighting mechanic, it's a little hard to do both. I didn't have anybody here to take a screenshot for me. So this area is 60 frames per second, this particular scene. 61 frames per second, 68 frames per second. Um, so, you know, the lighter areas, you know, where there's less, uh, I think, shadowing going on, it's it runs extremely well. But as soon as you get into, like, situations like this, where you got, you know, shadowing here, you know, all the, I think it, I think it's a particular shadowing and lighting here, you know. Different shadowing going on here, you know, all this, you know, I guess real reflections and... I just think that that's putting it to work for some reason in a particular way where it's, uh, you know, making the the video card work extra hard I guess out here at the fence where she's talking to um, I forget his name because uh, you know I don't I don't I like I said it's the first game I ever played um, so the, out here it's 60 frames per second 5.6 gigabytes of VRAM Fifty frames per second here in this particular shot. Still five point six gigabytes of VRAM. Oops, sorry. Stupid. Keep <laughs> stop it, Microsoft. Here, looking out at the zombies, 48 frames per second, it's still raining. 46. Is that the end? Okay, so that's it. I thought there was more. Hmm, interesting. Could have sworn there was more. But I guess that was it, yeah. So overall, you know, I tried to be pretty fair, you know. I didn't, like, but, uh, sugarcoat it. 
you know most of the time though everything was running smooth you know I didn't really have a bad experience at all so I mean as far as I could tell it was just that first cut scene with the guy when he got out of the car and was looking at the girl on the road that that uh, you know it dropped down to this 26 frames per second so I didn't really have any other situation that I can recall that it went you know below 40 frames per second you know it was still getting between 40 for lower 40s to mid 60s you know throughout the game so I could have showed you more areas where there was 60 some frames per second but whatever I'm not gonna like I said I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything so you know I think that this is an accurate representation 51.4 frames per second um, so you know I would say that that's fine I don't know about what this one put as an average so I mean if you go by sorry if you go by this even I mean here here it's showing 52 frames per second average so you know the minimum was 23 that was probably during that cut scene and then the max is 66 so this you can ignore because that was only like I said in the beginning where it was like loading in and it really like took a drop but you know here it's even showing 52 frames per second average so not bad that's definitely playable on a laptop for sure all right, so done with Resident Evil. Let's go on to the next one. All right, so I did a couple games here that I thought people would play on laptops. I mean, I could have done more, but I just don't have the time. Um, so I, I picked two RPGs, action RPGs, and then I did like one kind of multiplayer one, uh, World of Tanks. So I'll show you Grim Dawn real quick. We'll just flip through these real fast. Much quicker than the other. So, you know, here when I added all these together, I got 140 frames per second. Um, <clears throat> if you want to go the, by the frames per second counter, that one averaged a 100 frames per second. Again, the 43 was just when it was loading in, I think, so th that one you can ignore. Um, you know, it went up to as high as 168. So, you know, you can go with this average if you want 100 frames per second at 1080p. Um, I had everything on high settings, I believe. So there's the settings that I had. You know, pretty high. I took off the vertical sync, triple buffering, and depth of field. But I tried to keep like, uh, let me see if I changed it at all. No, I didn't change it. So you know, everything's pretty high. So the game looked pretty good. Um, so here I'm standing in the middle of the uh, thing here it's 103 frames per second very low VRAM GPU is working 99 percent 77 degrees so I'll just kinda like do what I just did earlier and just kinda like uh, whip through these real quick and tell you the uh, frames per second so here it's 103 93 136 126 171 151 115 170 106 I tried to get some areas where there was some stuff going on like zombies here getting ready to attack me you know and the fire here this does not do justice these pictures here it, it looks much better than this trust me when you're playing the game so I don't know why it looks so crappy 
taking these screenshots. I guess 1080p screenshots are not really that great. Um, the game looks good on the laptop, trust me. 121, 141, 140, 110, 130, 176, 171, 183, 193, 146. So I guess that was it. So, you know, the game ran... You can probably... I don't even know if you can turn up the graphics any higher. I think I had it at the highest, but... You know, obviously there's plenty of room to go higher than that, so... Um, yeah, so definitely... You can trust this 140 frames per second, but if you want to just go with the 100 average, that's fine too. <laughs> you know... Um, I don't know why it said 100 average. I'm not totally sure about that one. Um, I got 140 when I added all the screenshots together. So, yeah. And that was recent. So, Grim Dawn, new problemo. Uh, Path of Exile, let's see how that one was. So, Path of Exile was a little bit harder on it. 99 frames per second average and the uh, yeah so the FPS monitor I don't know what that got at the end let's see so here I did the uh, MSA times 4 shadows gl global illumination on shadows GI quality high sun shadow high number of lights medium post processing enabled water detail high texture quality high um, dynamic resolution off engine multi-threading I guess that's to use more cores um, I don't know why I put the tar I don't think I put the target frame rate up though I think I changed that um, so again here out in this area here the first area 120 frames per second. GPU is 97 percent. 91 frames per second. You know, I made sure I stood by some stuff with some particle effects and blah blah blah. 91 frames per second. I got all three flames here and then somebody also flaming on the ground that I killed. 88 frames, 90 frames per second. 113 with a bunch of zombies running after me. Uh, 108, 90, back at town. 103, 120, 118 with some people attacking me. Got some foliage here on the ground and I think some the waterfall. 85, 93 with some people attacking me with the waterfall. 88. So I guess that's it here. So so FPS counter got an average of 93. Again, the 41, I think, is loading in. 108 max. So, you know, it's pretty much, uh, you know, if you want to go by the frame, the FPS counter at 93, then do it. <laughs> you know, when I added all my screenshots together, I got 99, so... You know, I'm not trying to deceive you. So you got pretty good frame rates. Probably could have even tweaked the uh, game a little bit more to get to bump everything up to high. So uh, Path of Exile, Grim Dawn, very playable. World of Tanks, that was one that I wasn't sure how it was going to act. I just ran the benchmark for this one, for the most part. Um... I got an 88 frames per second average on this for ultra graphics quality. Now this wasn't the actual game, this was the Encore version, which I think was updated, you know, enough to probably reflect what you're going to get. So it came out as a great result here. I got 88 frames per second with my screenshots. The game benchmark said it was great for Ultra. I don't know why this is showing so small here, though. 
So I've had the game on Ultra, the Encore Edition GTX 1060, you can see here, at uh, 1920 by 1080 TSAA high quality Ultra Encore Edition. And then you can see here, everything's on Ultra and Maximum. 1920 by 1080 GTX 1060. The game actually looks pretty good. Now I didn't have the FPS counter on right uh, in the beginning here, but here this scene 78 frames per second. It's only at 2.4 gigs on the VRAM DirectX 11. Hundred frames per second in this scene. Again, the game looks pretty good. Eighty frames per second in this scene with the explosion. Tanks going through the water. Two point four gigs uh, gigs of VRAM being used here. So, you know, obviously this isn't me online, so the results could be different. Uh, 93 frames per second here. During this part here where the other tank exploded, it was 85 frames per second. So I was trying to see, like, if it dropped considerably there, but it stayed pretty good. Um, the CPU is working a little bit, obviously. It's running at a steady 3800 megahertz, though, pretty good. And this is as it was zooming out, so 98 frames per second. So obviously it can handle draw distance or whatever. So that was the end of that. So the FPS counter averaged 89. So if you want to go by that, that's fine with me. I don't care. <laughs> um, I got 88, so that's what I got for World of Tanks. So there you go. So uh, you know, I think that uh, this 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 laptop is fine for most gaming situations. Um, I don't know how we can, uh, maybe what I could do is uh, plug in my headphones now and let you hear the fans. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. So I'll put in a game like Resident Evil, uh, probably is a good one, or and Metro Exodus, either one. doesn't really matter. The fans ramp up on both of those, I think. So what I'll do is I'll... Um, I'll end this portion here and then tack on the uh, audio situation after this. Uh, I'll let you hear the fans spinning and I'll also uh, talk about the laptops that are out now that have the next generation graphics in them just to give you my opinions on what you can buy at a pretty reasonable price. Um, Alright, so be back. <laughs>